If we were in the classroom right now, I'd probably show you a demonstration that involves a sheet of rubber that's about 10 inches by 10 inches, and you sit it flat on the desk like shown in this picture, and you challenge somebody to try to lift it, and it turns out is really difficult. And it's not very heavy, like I say, it's just a 10 inch by 10 inch thin sheet of rubber. Uh, the reason it's very hard to lift has to do with atmospheric pressure. So uh, I think in our last uh, lesson, you learned that the radius of the Earth is about 4,000 miles. So here's an exaggerated picture of the thickness of our atmosphere, because the atmosphere extends at most 200 miles. If you had a postage stamp, or I'm just thinking of something that's one inch by one inch, so once again, I've exaggerated scale here. If you had something that was one square inch, then the weight of all the air pushing down on that would be about 14.7 pounds. In fact, that's a way to express atmospheres, atmospheric pressure. We can say P subscript zero, P naught. Atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSI, pounds per square inch. Actually, I prefer to write it as LB over IN squared. Okay, well, what if we had something that was more like 10 inches by 10 inches? Well, you could make something 10 inch by 10 inch if you had 10 postage squares lined up this way and another 10 lined up this way, so a total of 100 postage stamps, right? In other words, 10 by 10, 10 squared, 100. So how much would the weight of all of this air compare to the weight of all of this air? Should be 100 times as much. So in other words, there should be 14.7 times 100, or in other words, 1,470 pounds of force pushing down across this surface. But let's look at the pressure. 1,470 pounds divided by 100 square inches is the same thing as 14.7 pounds divided by 1 square inch. So the pressure on the large sheet is the same as it would be on a postage stamp, but the force would be much greater. And so you would have to be able to exert about 1,470 pounds to be able to lift that rubber sheet. Actually, I found a copy of the instructions for this, and it says that the, um, the rubber sheet's about 10 and a half square inches. So 10.5 squared would give you more like a, um, a force of 1,620 pounds. And it goes on to say that when you pull hard enough, and I found this to be the case, you really don't have to exert that much force to lift it. If you pull really hard, you can get it to lift. A wrinkle shows up. That wasn't a very good color. Yeah, a wrinkle will show up if you pull hard enough. And then at that point, it causes the... Um, yeah, it causes the rubber to deform and just a tiny opening shows up along the edge and if air can get in underneath then you have air pressure pushing down from above but you also get air pressure pushing down from below if you can warp it and allow the air to rush in. Another version of this demonstration says put a ruler or a meter stick or any long piece of wood set it on the edge of a desk and then put a newspaper on top of it and lay the newspaper really flat okay so that just like this one try to avoid having any seams where air can get in underneath so let the newspaper sit as flat as you can on the desk and then with a quick sort of karate chop type motion, push down with as much force as you can on this end of the meter stick, and then all of the air pushing down here creates a very large force that, uh, that the newspaper can't overcome, right? So the edge of the desk acts like an axis of rotation, like a fulcrum. And so all the force here ends up breaking the end of the meter stick if you do it swiftly. So that's just a demonstration in atmospheric pressure you can try in your own home.
You might want to try it after you watch this video. Fourteen point seven is the magic number. Fourteen point seven pounds per square inch. Whenever you think of atmospheric pressure, consider that value. Although that's not metric. So let's see if we can do a unit conversion here. 14.7 pounds divided by one square inch. Let's do a conversion factor and try to get rid of pounds and change it into the metric unit. That would be newtons. Let's see, I believe there are 4.45 newtons in every pound. Okay, now we need to get rid of square inches and change it into the metric unit. That would be a square meter. Well, I don't know how many inches are in a meter off the top of my head. I know how many inches are in a foot. Let's do that. Um, actually, I don't know how many square inches are in a square foot, so much as I know how many inches are in a foot. So if I want to correctly cancel out the units, I can't just multiply by 12. I have to take 12 and square it so that I end up with inches squared. And then one foot squared. Okay, so that ends up being 144 square inches to one square foot. And I know how many feet are in a meter. Uh, there's about 3.28 feet in every one meter. But again, I'm going to have to square that conversion factor because I'm trying to cancel out square feet. Okay, so grab your calculator, work all this out, see what you get. 14.7 times 4.45 times 144 times 3.28 squared is equal to 101340, roughly. About 101,340 what? Well, pounds canceled with pounds. Newtons. Uh, oh, Newtons remain. They didn't cancel out at all. Square inches canceled out. Square feet canceled out. Square meters didn't cancel out. That's what we're left with. Newtons per square meter. That's what we're after. That's the metric equivalent. So atmospheric pressure is either... 14.7 pounds per square inch, or it's 1.01, if we just want to stop at three sig figs, times 10 to the, what do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Newton per square meter. That's the same thing as 1.01 times 10 to the fifth Pascals. Right? A Pascal is a Newton per square meter. It's a unit for pressure. It's a metric unit for pressure. What's another unit of pressure? Well, in our next video lesson, I think uh, I'll go through a description of how a mercury barometer works. Well, this doesn't really give a good description of how it works. This is an actual picture of a mercury barometer. Here's a conceptual diagram for it. If you invert a glass tube full of mercury and the bottom of it is open up so the mercury can spill out into a dish, then atmospheric pressure pushes down. If the top part of this tube is um, a vacuum, then the, well, the weight of the column of mercury is balanced by atmospheric pressure and we'll learn why we can express atmospheric pressure then in another unit known as 760 millimeters of mercury. So for now there are one, two, three values you can associate with atmospheric pressure.